Art is too important not to share. Welcome to the Allie and Callie Artcast. Hi, I'm Allie. And I'm Callie, and we're with the Coeur d'Alene Arts and Culture Alliance. Hello, everyone. Hello. We are excited to be here in Dalton Gardens. It's a beautiful fall day. And there are deer running around frolicking. everywhere. Frolicking. It's, I feel like Snow White. They're frolicking. <laughs> You are Snow White. I am Snow White. (laughs) I love the deer. I know people don't always love the deer, but they are beautiful. And Mm. I just love seeing them. And on a bright, sunny day, there's nothing prettier than Canfield Mountain on a sunny day. That's that is right with the deer it's yeah with, with the, the deer. deer it's a beautiful day exactly. and uh, hey we're excited to be here because it's also i just want to remind everyone it's art walk tonight that's right so go to art walk go downtown Coeur d'Alene and and immerse yourself in art and community yeah. and 5 to 8 p.m mm-hmm. you know Go to all those participating restaurants and support the arts. And if you go to artsandculturecda.org slash artwalk, you can find out exactly what is going on. Yeah. Who's playing where and if there's any special uh, special events. events. Yeah. Check it out. Yes. Exactly. But it's another great night in Coeur d'Alene. That's right. Don't miss out. <laughs> How's well, that? I'm excited um, to be here in Dalton Gardens in Lillian Dodson's studio. Me too. It's my first time here. <laughs> Although I think I came to a garage sale here once and bought a rug. Oh, really? I think so. It might have been here. before she moved oh. here. Oh. I don't know. Possibly. Shh. It was years and years and years ago. <laughs> but I love I love this whole, uh, her whole area. She's got, what, two Two, two studios. studios. There's a little outbuildings. Three, and actually, because it is three. she has her ceramic studio in the garage. Oh, that's right. Yeah. So, well, what yeah. should we say? What should we say? We welcome. should say welcome. <laughs> welcome. Thank welcome, you very Lillian. much. Thank We're you. so My happy pleasure. to be here. Thank you so much for letting us come invade your space and talk to you about your art. It's good to be invaded occasionally. <laughs> <laughs> How long have you lived here? I think about eight years. Is that right? Yeah. Uh, yeah. It's a cool house. Lillian yeah. gave us a little tour of it, and it's very, can I say, eclectic? Yeah. That's yeah. a good name for it. And, yeah. and homey. And homey. It yes. is. Homey. That, yeah, homey. Yeah. There's a right. lot of great built-ins and beautiful artwork, mm-hmm. w- which is not a surprise. You know, the first time I met Lillian, she came to the chamber and, and sat in my office. And one of the first things she said to me is, people here don't understand abstract art. And I laughed and I said, I, I know. <laughs> <laughs> did I say that? You did. <laughs> <laughs> and it's true. People here it don't is. understand abstract art. Yeah. But you are an abstract artist and... I happen to love that. My mother's an abstract artist also, so I was raised with that. Tell us a little bit about yourself and how you came to be. To be? Be. (laughs) Or to be what? (laughs) Or not to be. To be an artist. That is the question. (laughs) Be an artist. Wow, how can you ever explain anything like that? (laughs) Because I, I, I was born with it, I'm sure. My mother noticed it when I was very young. She gave me a little ceramic character dog and a brush and some paints. And she said she noticed that I like to do things like that. Mm -hmm. And so that's where it started with that little ceramic dog and paintbrush. (laughs) And I was probably, I don't know, five years old, maybe. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But I always just... knowingly fooled around with art Mm -hmm. and uh, evidently I enjoyed it It was part of me and here I'm still using it Mm -hmm. right so primarily now you're doing painting but you used to do a lot of sculpture and pottery oh yes I did a lot of things I did a lot of things because of what I don't know Uh, (laughs) the environment that I was in perhaps the where I was lead being led in my life as a child uh, to the water, to the country. That's what I would associate with mm-hmm. because that's where I was going. Mm-hmm. Um, 
What was your question? I lost <laughs> myself. How did you how did you grow it as an artist? What where did you Yeah, um, yeah. get well, inspiration and All right, I always dabbled. We can just establish that. And right. I don't have anything to say about it, but it was just <laughs> dabbling. And I think I I can say I got serious at a particular time, mm -hmm. but that's rather recent. That was probably when I moved to New York from California. My husband was in business, so we all moved out, the two, three little guys and myself. Mm -hmm. And uh, at that time, I was painting and trying to be an artist, trying to just put in my time and paint and I knew nothing what I was going into and uh, so I, I was going to the shows that were available and wherever I could and this guy was having a show with a local museum and I went to the show and I liked what he did not that that was made any difference to me because mm -hmm. I didn't know the difference and I just said to myself well if this machine machine museum is good enough for him I'll be his student <laughs> oh so <laughs> that's great so and a relationship started there and I was a student for many years mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and I still am for that matter I married him <laughs> yeah <laughs> that was Stanley that was Stanley yeah that's... I have a fantastic picture of him upstairs I should take you to oh mm -hmm. yeah to see. yeah yeah, we it's would really like to quite, see that. quite lovely. I mm -hmm. found a really cute photo of the two of you online that went with an article that was written about both of you. And just like it looked like about a year before he died. Oh, uh -huh. yeah. Yeah. What was what were we doing? Standing or sitting or? We were standing in front of one of his pieces. His paintings. OK, mm -hmm. now I know which one it is. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. We're going to yeah. put that on a Facebook post when this airs so people can see samples of your work and oh. see you and Stanley. Oh, fine. In that You're going to take photographs? Oh. Yes. Yes, oh. we will. Mm -hmm. We'll take a few. Right. Okay. Great. <laughs> <laughs> so you studied with Stanley and you and you went on to um, uh, teach at um, the university on Long Island? Hofstra? Yeah, Hofstra University. Mm -hmm. Yes. Um, I studied with Stan... And he kept turning. I mean, I before I before he took me on as a student, I just kept calling and I says yes or no. You know, I wanted to know whether he was going to take me on or not. And he would never give me an answer. And so I walked, knocked on his door one day because I got tired of just fooling around. <laughs> and um, he looked at me with my long blonde hair and my <laughs> lovely figure at the time <laughs> <laughs> and he said come on in <laughs> and oh, the rest man, is they're all rest is history, history. <laughs> the rest is history and the love affair began yeah it's great yeah yeah it is history good history mm -hmm. yeah. so that so the classes that you took with him were through the museum no no, they no, were. they were private classes. Oh, they were. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, uh, myself and another person, uh -huh. basically. Maybe one or two would drop drop in occasionally and be mm -hmm. the third one. Right. And uh, I I was with him for a couple of years, just in, in that respect. Mm -hmm. And uh, we got to know each other pretty well. He would, you know, have a party now and then in the studio, which I could not. Approach, uh, associate with because I didn't drink or anything mm -hmm. and I still don't can't do it <laughs> I try <laughs> but I can't do it <laughs> just doesn't work for you <laughs> no uh, so did did you start with uh, pottery with him or did you did pottery before no with, no no pottery just no, clay nothing, no clay sculpture nothing no. Oh, just painting. Just painting. Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay. I'm trying to go back in my mind. Where was I? I'm, I'm, I'm right now. I'm in New York. New York. Okay. Raising three boys by myself, mm -hmm. and I found Stanley in the museum. So we kind of took off. Not, I mean, not verbally, but yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. And 
I keep forgetting where I am. That's all right. <laughs> and you, you you trained with him and learned how to do some of this abstract painting. No, 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 no. He he didn't teach. He didn't teach that. He, he did not teach. He he taught supposedly at Hofstra University for many years, but he never teach. Uh -huh. Never did teach. Oh. What he did, which I think was pretty amazing, he just allowed you to teach to just do. Uh -huh. And he would introduce you like he would give you a still life perhaps or you make one up of your own and you look at it and you're in puzzlement and you don't know what to do with it and you ask him and he looks at it for a while, looks at your work, and then he'll say, look at this little part here, what's going on? And then he would point things out that way instead of saying, that's not correct, do it this way. Mm -hmm. He was never said that to anybody, I don't think. Wow. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and so they, they, he taught them to think for themselves. That's what he taught them. Mm -hmm. And everyone that's ever been his student has mentioned that his personality as doing that mm -hmm. as far as his teaching was concerned. Right. He was a good teacher. Mm -hmm. That's why we stayed together for so long. Mm -hmm. Never told me what to do. <laughs> smart <laughs> man. That is. Yeah. <laughs> Very smart. <laughs> so yeah. when did you get into pottery? Oh, gosh. Uh, I had a show first at the Heckscher Museum because... Maybe because of Stanley. I keep thinking he pushed me, but he pushed me into my work. That's where he pushed me, mm -hmm. uh, just because he knew I had something going. I don't mm -hmm. know how he knew that. I mean, I, I can't, you know, agree with it, but there, that was his word, so I trust him. Right. Um, I had a show there, and I was just exhausted from painting. Enough was enough for maybe a week. So I put my paints away and I mm -hmm. decided to fool around with clay. Mm -hmm. And that's when I began after that big show. And I continued clay because I loved it so much and I just didn't know how to get away from it. And I forgot about my work as a painter. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and the curator at the museum was really upset because she had big plans for me as a painter really yes oh, and wow. i didn't know that <laughs> <laughs> otherwise i may have continued i don't know uh -huh. mm -hmm. but uh she she uh she was very upset uh-huh uh, she never let me know that though but i got the she was a friend of stan's also right mm -hmm. uh, good relationship mm -hmm. um, and so that's when I went into clay I just picked up some clay and just started fooling around with it mm -hmm. I, tr I didn't know anything about clay <clears throat> I didn't seek teachers uh, that's how stubborn I am <laughs> and so I made things out of clay and I put them on the radiator to dry and learned that that was not the way to do it. <laughs> right. Because <laughs> everything broke. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so that was endless. I, I finally seek teachers and, and uh, or just experiment or I read or something. I don't know. I got over that, mm -hmm. in other words, um, because it, I didn't learn quickly because I had no teachers. Right. And I was just wanted to work alone mm -hmm. and I just kept experimenting I do that a lot in my life and make a lot of mistakes because of it mm -hmm. uh, but I don't mind that because I have the time for it nobody right. you know everybody's worrying about dying young I don't worry about it I just right. keep going <laughs> just keep going keep plugging away I'm too busy <laughs> that's great that's good but I think that keeps you I think that keeps you young when mm -hmm. you're when you stay busy and well that if it makes you happy and happiness has something to do with you know staying alive mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. for yeah. sure hey y'all it's jason from tubs coffee roasters we are north idaho's specialty coffee roaster we are homegrown and we are local we love coffee and we love our community especially Allie and callie in our cast we have a retail space in our roastery in Hayden, and we can also be found on the shelves at Super One and Yolks. And if you like to buy coffee online, we do offer subscriptions. You can find us at TubsCoffeeRoasters.com. Support arts and culture and your local roaster. That's all. 
So Lillian, you've yes. been on the Coeur d'Alene Artist Studio Tour for are a couple of years. Are we recording? Yes, we are. We are. We're back. Okay. And, <laughs> and, um, and I remember listening to you talk to somebody. I've actually heard you talk to several people about the process. And why don't you just talk a little bit about your process? Because I love what you have to say about it. I wish I knew what I had to say. I wonder, how do you start? How do you start? Do you have a vision of like, like oh, I'm how looking do, at let's, you. Okay, so we're going to be in real life. We have a piece of canvas. Yes. Mm-hmm. Because a whole lot's going up here now. Mm-hmm. And it always does when I paint. Mm-hmm. Either that, my mind is too busy to paint. And I don't paint when I'm in that condition. Because I like to just sit back and relax and allow it to sneak into my being, I guess. I don't even want to say mind because I don't mm-hmm. want my mind to work. Right. Mm-hmm. I want to not think. Right. So uh, that's, I think, can lead into how I start my paintings. I, I might sit in that old rocking chair over there mm-hmm. and uh, just just blank myself out but not work at it. Just allow it to happen. And then I get out and I look at the colors no, with no idea what I'm going to do. Now, we're talking about abstract art. Yes. Right. Which mm-hmm. is someplace around here. <laughs> uh, and uh, then I just start putting paint down on the canvas. And it changes what I'm doing because I'm not thinking of what to put next. I'm not thinking of another color. Mm-hmm. Because if I start planning a painting in the abstract form, uh, some realistic painting, I would have to think. Mm-hmm. I guess that's why I don't want a realistic painting, because I don't want to think. Mm-hmm. Um, not that there's anything bad about it, but just it's no freedom there. Mm-hmm. Right. Uh, so I, uh, yeah, will take another color and put it and see what happens, see what they do with one another, do another shape perhaps. I don't know. It, it just evolves that way, mm-hmm. which when I, I just don't know what I'm going to do next. And if I did know, and if I tried doing what my mind really is turning around wanting to do something and has a, has a, a plan for me, it never works. <laughs> right. <laughs> so, <laughs> so. I get that. So I have learned just to be whoever I need to be in order to do it, whether it's good or bad. Mm-hmm. I may just tear it up and throw it away. Right. Mm-hmm. Not in anger. Or just um, eliminate it and do something different, paint over it. Mm-hmm. Until I felt good doing it. And if it doesn't come, if I don't have the feeling, Mm -hmm. not the thought process, but the feeling that goes into the paint and into the canvas. And uh, that's what's important to me. Right. Are they acrylics? Are are you in oils or acrylics? Acrylic. Yeah. So they're very. They look acrylics to me. These these bottles that I have here. Mm I had really a lot of them when I moved out here because they belonged to my husband. Mm -hmm. He was a painter. Mm -hmm. And this is only a third of what I brought with me. And Mm -hmm. this is what I have left Mm -hmm. of eight years of work. Mm -hmm. Wow. And don't remember your question. Oh, I just wondered if it was (laughs) acrylics. Acrylic or. Oh, yeah. yeah. These are not, these are acrylic. Mm -hmm. But when I first began painting in New York, I used a paint that Stan and all of the artists were using at the time. It's called Magna Acrylic. Mm. Mm -hmm. Oh, I've never heard of that. I know. One does not hear about it because they had to take it off the uh, market because it was killing everybody. Oh, Oh. geez. (laughs) Well, that's a good thing. I decided (laughs) to leave it alone. Right. I mean, I had rashes. Oh, no. Oh, man. Yeah, but I didn't care because I was painting. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But... It went away right as soon as I quit. So that's when I went to water acrylics. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That's what I use. Yeah. Did you ever use oils? Not a lot. When I began painting, because I thought that was all there was. Right. Mm-hmm. So I used it. But then uh, I was introduced to acrylic. I don't remember how. Mm-hmm. Maybe I just found it on my own. 
So right. that's what, that's that's the only reason I use it because it's comfortable with me and mm-hmm. it's easy to clean up. Uh, no, <laughs> not when I'm. St- you can well, see that by my table here. Well, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I just cover it up with another piece yeah. of paper. Yeah, right. <laughs> that works too. <laughs> oh dear, no, I I do occasionally clean it up mm-hmm. if yeah. I'm having an opening or something like right. the tour. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah, and, right. and this is as clean as it gets. <laughs> right. Well, right. you never want your studio to look immaculate because that's not a working studio that's a working gallery yeah, yeah that's yeah, right yeah but how many people would think that way oh well. i don't think artists well no i speak for myself i i, would, I don't i'm not that interested in making it feel like a home right some, some place to sit back i can sit back in the chair and yeah. i don't have to have it clean right no. you know and this is called clean yeah yeah and my floor needs a vacuuming, I know. <laughs> but, um, wait, I didn't notice. Wait till the one of the boys come over. Let yeah, them right. Look there at it go. for me, and I have a vacuum in the corner. Right. <laughs> yeah, I might mention here just really quick since you brought it up that um, Scotty Dodson is your son. Yes. He's, we interviewed him mm-hmm. um, like a month or two ago, yeah. and he's the Sandcastle man. Yeah. Yeah. He never not. mentioned that to me until yesterday. Oh. Isn't that funny? He assumed he did. Oh, <laughs> silly man. And I haven't found it yet. Oh. Oh, well, I'll send you that one, too. Yeah, okay. so you can <laughs> listen to both of them. And That's he's a great right. musician, too. Right, exactly. We've had him at Riverstone Concert Series, also. We have, yeah. Opening up. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah his music. He's, yeah. Mm-hmm. He's very happy with that. Right. The combination, the sandcastles and the music and his wife. Yeah. And her children and her grandchildren. Right. Yeah. And that goes on and on. It's all good. <laughs> so he's really a pretty, pretty decent together guy. Yeah. Well, he credited you for a lot of his creativity mm-hmm. growing well, up, which I thought was I, I appreciate that, but I think we're just there. It's just there and we take advantage of it being there. Right. Mm-hmm. I would agree with that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. We can just ignore it and get frustrated by it and oh, yeah. right. crazy about it <laughs> and dealing with it. Mm-hmm. And that's not fun. Right. Mm-hmm. You know, I think life is here to have fun. I agree. <laughs> agree. So if somebody wanted to buy one of your paintings. I'd give them any any chance they wish okay. <laughs> because Go i on. know my sister was here on the studio tour oh, uh-huh. and she wanted a painting and i wish she was with me because i'm here right and i would totally get it for her but i don't know which one she wanted i know she loves your paintings well, and God, um she and was, i have a telephone number i will i will i mean i'm not you're you're available Right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I'll let her know because I see one I love right now that I love a lot of them, but mm-hmm. right now I see one that is drawing my eye. Is it? Yeah. That's cool. It's up up above there on the tall, skinny. Well, you're seeing all of the kind of the ones here. <clears throat> that's not recent. Mm-hmm. But the ones you see here are just the makeovers from things that I didn't finish. Right. Oh, right. right. Yeah. So the other ones are all in storage behind me in oh, the yeah. cupboard mm-hmm. here. Mm-hmm. So you want to look through them, you go right ahead. I will. And if I she will. wants to come and look through them, fine. I'll tell her. She's, oh, yeah. She's By all means. She missed out. She, she thought about it. How do you it? miss out with an artist that has paintings? I right. think she was afraid to. She wanted to see everyone's studio first before she purchased. Uh-huh. And well, she's, that's smart. She's one of those who has more art than she has walls. <laughs> and so I said, mm-hmm. but you kept thinking about it, so you should have bought it. That's right. what I said. And so, right. Well, it's never too late if she right. wants to buy it. I'm, I'm not here to sell, though. I know. I right. mean, I, I, you, you do it's it. always kind of nice to do that. And right. I, I, I did sell it the other uh, show here, mm-hmm. you know, your show. What do you call it? The Art studio, Art studio tour. tour. Yeah. <laughs> well, I did very nicely, work. but. Uh, well, the nice thing was that we produced an artist guide that people could keep that has every artist contact information. So mm-hmm. if, if anybody did see something that they liked that call they didn't them. take advantage of yeah. at the moment, cool. yeah. they can always call and yeah. make arrangements yeah. afterwards. So Absolutely. Yeah. I don't think any of us will mind that at all. I'm pretty no. sure you won't. Yeah. <laughs> And it's not the money. <laughs> <laughs> so, Lillian, I, I feel like Stanley was probably a pretty 
strong influence on your art. Is there anybody else that was pretty influential that inspired you? Stanley or? was not an influence on my art. He wasn't. No. It's, <laughs> but I, I always needed them him there to look at it. I guess I worded but, it wrong. As yeah. an inspiration well, that's okay. for your art. Always an inspiration, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. But it just the way he handled teaching. He just mm -hmm. never never told you what to do. Right, mm -hmm. right. And that was very important to me because mm -hmm. I'm too stubborn to follow it anyway. <laughs> <laughs> A good well, supporter. I was, I was really um, intrigued by the article that we found about the two of you that he had been friends with um, and used to meet with several other artists who were considered the abstract impressionists. Yeah. Um, like Jackson Pollock and... Yeah. Um, some others were you ever were you part of his life during that time i'm afraid so you were <laughs> <laughs> so did you meet those people yeah some yeah. of them yeah yeah it was probably the uh, highlight of my art career mm -hmm. i bet meeting them uh, they were nice people i thought well the where we would meet they we'd have a show up there maybe in the gallery not me but them mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and or another gallery or they lived in the vicinity or something but there was a bar there on Madison Avenue that they hung out in mm -hmm. so when I met Stanley we got pretty well acquainted and then he used to take me with him because he knew I was just an old country bumpkin and I knew nothing <laughs> and I still am and I'm going to keep it that way <laughs> but I was and I still I'm still thrilled to know that I met these people because mm -hmm. they were amazing and fascinating mm -hmm. right but at the at the round table where we were all drinking except me um they were just regular folks sure. yeah and uh so Yes, it was fascinating, I bet. and I, I learned that. a lot just by being there and listening to them. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What else can I say? Yeah, so, and of course, my ego went flying through the moon because I met these wonderful guys, <laughs> right? <laughs> <laughs> and I'm still thrilled about it. Of like, like. Um, de Kooning. I met de Kooning very briefly. Mm -hmm. And uh, who else? I'm trying to mention them right now. I'd never met Jackson Pollock. Mm -hmm. Oh, you didn't meet him. But no. there was also um, Mark Rothko and Franz Mark Rothko. Fine. He was at our table. He was one of the drunks. Uh, <laughs> What else did they have to do? Right. You know, they yeah. they get themselves so uptight and stuffed. Oh, I bet. Tight because mm -hmm. of their work as an artist. Mm -hmm. They're really, they're really, you know. They should have taken Lillian's approach and relaxed. <laughs> Not and just care. do. And just, just do. do. <laughs> I don't think they knew it. <laughs> right. <Yeah. laughs> but they would drink and that's where they kept their sanity, I think. Yeah. Wow. But so I can't, I can't blame them. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But what Mark Rothko was very thrilling to me simply because he asked me to work for him at really? his studio. Hmm. He didn't know that I had three boys to take care of. <laughs> and he didn't know I lived on the island. He didn't care who I was. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I had long blonde hair. <laughs> <laughs> and that's all he really cared about. <laughs> and a very pretty white little shirt that was <laughs> not real tight around my neck. <laughs> so... And I was thrilled that I knew not what to say, and I didn't say anything. I never, I said, I'll let you know, or some yeah. cool thing like that. But he didn't want me to help him paint. No. <laughs> uh, after he left, all the guys were looking at each other and said, yeah, sure. Yeah, we know. <laughs> then I got the clue what they were talking about. Oh, boy. Yeah. He wanted me as a dear friend. <laughs> <laughs> wow. And he has enough of those, I'm sure. Right. <laughs> that would jump at the idea of really working with him. At the time of the, uh, in, in his life that he did the chapel painting in Texas somewhere. Uh-huh. I don't remember where it was. I don't either. But and, and he needed help 
getting up on a just this oh, what is it the, the scaffolding the sca- scaffolds mm-hmm. and I was young and you know aware of, yeah, I could do it mm-hmm. and but that's a lot of baloney <laughs> 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 so obviously I didn't get back to him <laughs> so what else was um, part of the excitement in the New York art scene during that time oh big question big question uh for me, it was just meeting them. Mm-hmm. We didn't do or say it. I wasn't in the conversation particularly mm-hmm. because I wasn't there in their life. Mm-hmm. And they had so much to talk about. And it was usually something like very important business, uh, like baseball <laughs> <laughs> or some other thing of that sort. They didn't talk about their paintings. Mm. Uh huh. There were about four or five of them around the table. And the paintings were not a subject. They lived them. They're there to drink so they could not right. think about mm-hmm. that part of their life. Mm-hmm. Right. And so they're okay without sharing their egoness with their paintings. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That that takes care of itself, I guess. Yeah. Right. How did you end up in Coeur d'Alene? Oh, end up. I'm don't I think I'm ended up. <laughs> <laughs> how did how did you how land did I get here? here? How did I you like get that. here? All right. Uh let's see, I'm gonna go back to New York. Okay. Not too far. I had my studio stand was has his studio in the house by that time. Mm-hmm. We built a studio onto my house, and he loved it there. He said he's never lived in a house before that was this nice or just whatever he says to that effect because mm-hmm. he was a poor kid, poor Polish in Detroit. And uh, so I, I talked to him. I said, I lose what I'm going to say. <laughs> yeah, that's all right. <laughs> and, uh, well, I guess I'm not saying it because uh, he, he did pass away in 08, Mm -hmm. And uh, I waited four years by having to stay there to clear up his work and get his life as Mm -hmm. an artist something taken care of. Sure. Mm -hmm. And after I finished that, I brought all of his paintings, which were about 400, to Idaho uh, because I moved here. Mm-hmm. Uh, I was going to move here. So Corey and I decided, and uh, Scott, that we would build a studio for him on Corey's land in mm-hmm. Kerrywood. Mm. Beautiful big studio, and that's where his paints went. Oh. Then finally, I was able to pack up my bags, including not my ceramic studio. I left most everything there because I was going to... I was in a strange place in my own head Mm -hmm. where I didn't want to think about ceramics or anything. I just wanted to think about a change in my life. Yeah. I was about 81 at the time, Mm -hmm. which is pretty stupid time to move. (laughs) (laughs) But but I did it and I was happy about it. Mm -hmm. Um, So that's it. Not it. Not quite it. I moved to... I didn't want to go any place that I knew people from New York. From New York. Oh. Mm. And you just wanted to get away. I wanted to get fresh away. Fresh start. A fresh start. I would. I didn't even think about what I was doing. Mm-hmm. I just saw the a video or something on TV and. Isn't that great? Um, wow. I was looking at some maps and somehow I I saw a little picture of a town and water and boats and people. And that was uh, uh, Fort Townsend, Port Townsend. Oh, Vid- yeah. Uh, and, yeah. Yeah. Which in is Washington. a gorgeous little town. Yeah. Gorgeous little town. So that's where I bought a flight to, Port Townsend, mm-hmm. Washington. And I stayed there for about two years in this wonderful old antique house on the right in town. Cool. Whose husband used to be a great painter. Mm-hmm big as walls <laughs> and uh, I loved it there for two years and that's how I got there and then I kept <coughs> wanting my boys to move there with me because I loved it so much but they're not about to do that <laughs> so I had to move here to that be with them they lived here uh, right? they lived here gotcha in Coeur d'Alene not in the well in the vicinities mm-hmm. and that's how I got here well mm-hmm. see and aren't I, we lucky I moved up the hill here about seven, eight years ago before I 
came to this place. Mm -hmm. And it was comfortable there. It was sweet. The neighbors are wonderful. And I was miserable. Mm. So I didn't want to stay there. Mm -hmm. And I didn't know that until I was Sunday driving, which I did quite often. Mm -hmm. And suddenly I, I saw a sign that said for sale open house mm -hmm. so I said oh what the hay and so I came into I went into the front door and uh, they were busy talking to other people and so I went out the back door and I met the owner and all I did was knew that I belonged mm -hmm. here and so I uh, didn't say anything to him and I didn't even know what the house was about you know, I just went to bed that night knowing that, having that that story in my own mind that it's my house. I uh -huh. live there. In fact, my body shook looking at the mountain. Mm. And, uh, you know, I couldn't back out of yeah. my decision. <laughs> right. You just knew. You just knew. Yeah. That's so great. I got up the next morning and I wrote a check for $100. Scott told me to do that because he knew how I felt. Mm -hmm. and uh, gave it to the owner just to hold that place for me. They held it for $100? Yeah. Wow. wow. That's great. I bet they don't do that anymore. No, I, know. I don't know. I don't know. It's just to say, yeah. Yeah. It's my house. Yeah. It's an, uh, a gesture Ernest. of Ernest of, money, uh, but that's really commitment. Low. Ooh, right. That's great. But yay. That's yay, awesome. indeed. <laughs> wow. So the story is all there after that. Mm -hmm. This is where I am, and I still shiver looking at the mountain. <laughs> that's awesome. It's a, it's a wonderful place here, and... and it's, I don't think most people feel that way, but most, uh, I mean, a lot of people don't, but most do mm -hmm. feel that this is a, is a very special place and they're, you know, happy for me. Yeah. Yeah. Because yeah. The deer are here. The deer, the deer are, are great. here. Yeah. 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 It's gorgeous. And I love that you don't chase them away. I oh, know. no. I sneak an apple once in a while, but I'm not supposed to do that. Right. Hi, Allie here. Hey, do you love our art cast? Be sure to follow us on your favorite podcast app or like us on Facebook to get notifications about some upcoming giveaways, like an official Allie and Callie mug. Our audience is growing too, and we are a great outlet for advertising. Consider being a sponsor and Callie and I will record an ad for you or help you record it yourself. Thank you for listening. So at some point, um, you went to work for Hof Hofstra University, yeah. and what I read is that you taught there for 22 years. That's 26 or 7. 26 or 7, wow. Mm -hmm. So, um, but here you've been talking about how you approach your art so freely. I suspect that you had to have something behind you in order to become a professor at a university. So I'd love to hear that story. Well, do you have a degree? <laughs> <laughs> we didn't discuss that when I went to Hofstra. <laughs> okay. Oh, I see. Stanley taught there. He was known mm -hmm. and he was liked. And he said he had nothing to do with it. And so I was a potter at the time. I thought, you know, I mean, I still think I was <laughs> at the time. Um, and um, they saw my work because I took it there to be fired in their very large gas kiln. Mm -hmm. And so the boss of the ceramic department knew what I did. So he says, how about coming to work for us? Mm. It's that simple. Wow. Yeah. That's awesome. Well, that it's just, it's kind of remarkable. It is remarkable. And but I was it really scared speaks, to death. It really speaks to your work. I I guess that's what it does. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I have um, purchased a few of your little plates that I absolutely love. I gave them to my daughter. Oh, good. <laughs> but, um, thankfully, you gave me one. And oh, that's I good. I have too. that on my counter. In oh, the, good. In All the right. <laughs> There's a couple more in there. <laughs> I know. I'm looking forward to showing these guys yeah, I, I your see pottery too. studio, too. Okay. I can't believe you have um, all these studios. Well, I'm not using it as a pottery studio. I, I use it to fire work and make stuff mm -hmm. hand by hand. I don't have any equipment. Mm -hmm. Right. You know, I have a knife and a fork or something like that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's about it. Mm -hmm. 
So tell us a little bit about your experience teaching. How was it? Did you love it? Oh, uh, you were there a long time. I was there a long time. I don't know how I stood it, (laughs) (laughs) but I actually love the teaching and I love the students and a few of them didn't love me because they needed to work. Mm-hmm. And, uh, and and I wasn't nasty about it. They didn't want to do it. That's up to them. Mm-hmm. Uh, golly sakes, let's see. I don't even know where to, where to what to say about that. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I mean, anything anything stand out about that time? Did you do shows and? Yeah, yeah. Stanley and I, in fact, after I was there, probably twenty, maybe eighteen years or something. He and I had a show there together. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah, and that was quite remarkable mm-hmm. and very popular show because he's so good, and I did it with them, <laughs> so we shared our fame. Oh, the ego is so wonderful. Isn't it? <laughs> That's great. I love sharing the fame. Share That's the awesome. fame. That's good. You can do it together. And that was about it for, for sharing. Yeah, and I had other shows there too because we had our own personal the art department had their own gallery there too so you know the teachers would have their shows there right so that was a good time too right yeah so i just showed whatever i wanted to show it was either ceramics which i taught which i you know but i may have snuck in a few of my early paintings or something Mm -hmm. yeah and uh i I also once at, at one time made furniture Mm-hmm. You did? Yeah, rustic furniture. I have nothing left. I have a frame of something out there that is dying. <laughs> a happy d- a death, I think. <laughs> it's I been put out to pasture? <laughs> put out, it was put out under those big trees over there, and I think all of the deer were just yeah. enjoying it. <laughs> it, had, it had a beautiful, it's a set tea. It mm-hmm. had a beautiful wo- woven seat on it that mm-hmm. I did of rope I think it was oh wow and the squirrels took that apart part for their nest right because they're going to have babies <laughs> and uh, things like that so it's out there only the part of the frame and uh, yeah so I did rustic furniture mm-hmm. my son Corey does immaculate perfect beautiful furniture he's a he's a furniture he's a cabinet maker oh cool and he's finally deciding to retire because enough of his body, you know, he can't take it anymore. Right. <laughs> and still have a, a, a nice old age waiting for him. Yeah. <laughs> it's hard. So, hard uh, and Corey, he does wonderful furniture and he looked at mine and he, he would just take it and fit, um, emotionally out, apart. Right. <laughs> because it was such trash. <laughs> <laughs> but that's what I wanted. Yeah. I wanted that rustic, crazy, <laughs> fall apart <Right>. look. <laughs> but he could never understand that. Because yeah. <laughs> he's a perfectionist yeah. anyway. That's right. Yeah. Scott never objected with anything that I did. Mm-hmm. So I, I, did, I did a lot of things, but I always came back to painting. Mm-hmm. What else did I do? Oh, golly. It's in one of the books. I did, I made hats. Hats? <laughs> made hats? I yeah. love hats. I made hats. What oh. kind of hats? What else am I going to say? What kind of hats? Felt. Felt oh, hats. Oh, I love. I made, the, I made the felt out of the wool. I made the felt first, and then I made the hat from that. She's got these watercolor on this kind of a parchment paper drawings with little descriptions. That was one of the most fun things I've ever done. Uh Really? And the hardest, too. Yeah. So did you 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 actually shear the sheep or did you... What, these hats? Yeah. They're all all copies of what I made. Oh, you made them all? Yeah. Yeah. These Mm -hmm. are awesome. It's my record. I love love it. This white and gray. This was fun to make. Oh, it's like 1920s. I wish you would make more. So you (laughs) actually, you, you took the wool and felted it. Yeah. And then you turned it into hat. Right. That's had, really cool. I had a form, a head, wooden form, uh-huh. to build on. I only had one, oh, right. unfortunately. Uh-huh. But that wow. was enough. Yeah. And then just start adding to it, subtracting from it, whatever. Right. Until it looked like a hat. 
Wow. How fun. You should publish this book. You should. Oh, really? This is a great... You should. It's no, amazing. I'm serious. Who would, who would want that? I would. I have a goal. Um, I bought a loom. I have been learning how to weave. And my goal is to one day take the wool, spin the wool, oh. and then weave the wool and oh, make wow. something out of it. I just think... If I could do that once before I die, I'd be really happy. <laughs> oh, yeah. Well, you have time, but why wait? Yeah. I I know. Why wait? I know. Well, there isn't I'm enough so time. I'm so stinking busy. I know. This, this is the only time we have anyway. That's, That's right. right. We have to I make know. time. We have to make do time it. for the things you love. Yeah. It's already there. It is. You don't yeah. have to make it. Yeah. You, true. You know, you don't whip it up with <laughs> orange juice or anything Boy, to make that it. Is- so true. Just what I have to do is I have to do like uh, you did with this house. I just have to own it and and be and, it. You and, have to love wanting it. to do it. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And that has to be your your what what you need to do. Mm-hmm. And you deserve to do it. Right. You, they'll right. take over your business. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Get Terry in there. She'll do great. Yeah, there that's you right. Go. That's right. right. <laughs> that's great. <laughs> Well, Lillian, it is oh. delightful to talk to you. And yes. Thank you. Just was learn great. a little bit more about you and your background. And thank you. I have learned a lot about me, too. Because <laughs> I don't think about me that, yeah. in that sense of, of all the things I've done. Right. I knew Jack Kerouac. I didn't tell you that. Oh, you did? Wow. There we go. Oh, wow. <laughs> he was a very good friend of Stanley's, my oh, husband. Oh, okay. They lived in New- Northport together. Mm-hmm. Stanley lived there for years. We never lived together for 17 years after we got married, by the way. Oh. Mm-hmm. We just wandered it that way. He okay. had his studio. I had mine, home, uh-huh. mine, you know. Right. We loved each other the way we were. Why spoil it? Right. <laughs> it's a good marriage. <laughs> it did come, though, where where we had to move together when we built the studio because he lost his studio. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. And we really liked each other just living together. Mm-hmm. Wow. He's the easiest person in the world. Okay, Jack. <laughs> what can I say about Jack Kerouac? He was a big baby. (laughs) He was a dear man. He was kind, um, mixed up like heck, drank like heck. Mm -hmm. Uh, He and Stanley would have binges together like heck. Mm -hmm. Oh, boy. Yeah. And uh, I liked Jack very much. Jack didn't like me in the beginning. Oh, really? Hmm. Yeah, because he and Stanley were like that. And here's this blonde mm-hmm. <laughs> coming into Stanley's life and mm-hmm. taking over, he thought. Mm-hmm. And so he was afraid that I would take over in his relationship from from Stan. Hmm. So he was really worried about that. Right. But I didn't. But you didn't. Yeah. No, wow. so I, then... didn't, I didn't need to do that. Right. So I liked Jack very much. He was a nice person. I never knew him when he wasn't drunk, though, so, you know, mm. it's hard to... Hard to know what a person really is. Yeah, when yeah. Yeah. He was probably very sad in his own life, mm-hmm. his own space. Yeah. Right. Well, wow. In fact, I know he was. Yeah. <laughs> right. hmm. That's yeah. sad. Yeah, as were many. Like, you know, you hear the stories about Jackson Pollock being, you know, a tortured soul. And mm-hmm. it's, I think we're all tortured in a way, but... Theirs is more so, much yeah. more so, and they don't know how to work with it. Yeah, some neither, of us handle neither it do better. we. You know, we're we're just babies at this, right? Mm-hmm. And we do what we can do, but they really didn't want to or didn't know how to. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And I'm no philosopher, so I'm I'm not doing the world any good right now. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I don't know about that. You seem like you know what's going on. Yeah, well, you do. I don't know. <laughs> I just live my life that's the way I love it, and mm-hmm. that's it. Well, Lillian, thank you so much for taking some time out of your day to <laughs> thank talk you. to us. Yes, it was thank great. You. It was more fun than I thought it would be. Done. I'll tell you that. That's right. right. <laughs> See, we always have a good time. I know we do. I mean, how time. often does a person just sit here and jabber, <laughs> right, about herself? Yet I know. Oh, and we get to find Uh-oh. out about you. Right. And I know nothing about you. I, I know, know Allie, and that's I it. Know. <laughs> well, and not that well. No. <laughs> next time. Next yeah. time. Right. There'll be a next time. Yeah. 
And if I have a birthday party coming up, you're all invited. Oh, Yay. thank you. Yay. Oh, good. Excellent. That will be great. I've been throwing myself a surprise birthday party for about four years. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> so if I'm still on my feet, we'll have another one. Right. That sounds great. Okay. I'm, yeah. I'm looking We're forward game. to that. Yeah. All yeah. right. All right. Because I'm no kid. <laughs> All righty. Well, I'm Allie. And I'm Callie. And whatever you do today, make sure it's creative. The Allie and Callie Artcast is a program of the Coeur d'Alene Arts and Culture Alliance and is sponsored by NIA, North Idaho Alliance, a woman-based leadership organization designed to inspire, uplift, and impact your community and lives. And Tubbs Coffee Roasters, globally sourced, locally roasted coffee.